Okay, let's move on to lesson number five. This lesson covers procedures and aircraft operations. Now, just like a traffic light, they make sense and improve the safety for all concerned. Okay, let's join our instructor in the classroom and get started. Hi, this is Josh Prusik for ASA. As a commercial pilot, you'll be spending a lot of time at the airports. Now, this lesson is designed to review airport operations and procedures that you will probably find familiar from your private pilot days. As a commercial pilot, your airport operations set the standard for precision and accuracy. We'll look at airspace and VFR weather minimums, as well as VFR cruising altitudes in this lesson. Then we'll take a look at airport signs and markings, and we'll talk about operations on slippery and wet runways. We'll also discuss land and hold short operations. Finally, we'll take a look at some flight physiology and talk about the aeronautical decision-making process. With that said, let's get started. We're going to start out by reviewing airspace classifications. Now, airspace can be confusing to the uninformed, but your examiner will expect you to know it like a pro. As a commercial pilot, you can bet that you'll be responsible for knowing it like one too. Now, let's take a look at that airspace. First of all, we have Class G airspace, which you can see right here. Class G airspace is usually found in places like we see right here, which is very near the ground. It also sometimes surrounds higher terrain and mountains like we see right here. Now, Class G airspace can be thought of with a couple of different acronyms. First of all, I like to think of the G standing for government free because Class G airspace is the least restrictive. You can also think of the G standing for ground because in many areas this is where it's found. Low layer of airspace that overlies the ground. Now, Class G airspace is uncontrolled airspace, meaning ATC has neither the authority nor the responsibility for control of traffic flying in this area. Therefore, the PIC always has the responsibility to see and avoid other traffic. Now, you can fly IFR in Class G airspace, and you do not even need a clearance because it is uncontrolled airspace. However, because Class G airspace is often very close to the ground, operating IFR here with or without a clearance would be dangerous because there would really be little margin for error before hitting something. Except for a few places in the west where Class G airspace extends into the higher altitudes, IFR flights transitioning through Class G airspace are usually doing so for the purpose of takeoffs or landings at an airport. Therefore, most Class G airspace is used by VFR pilots. Let's take a look at the next slide. We're going to look at visibility requirements for Class G airspace. Now, the visibility requirements for VFR flight in Class G airspace are one mile during the day when operating below 10,000 feet MSL. Now, this visibility goes up to three statute miles at night. Now let's take a look at visibility when operating above 10,000 feet MSL and above 1,200 feet AGL. If you're doing so, you'll need to have at least five statute miles visibility, day or night. Now, in Class G airspace, when operating below 10,000 feet MSL during the day, you need to operate clear of clouds on all sides, like we see in this graphic right here. At night, you'll need to stay 500 feet below the clouds, 1,000 feet above them, and 2,000 feet horizontally from the clouds. Now, if you're operating above 10,000 feet in Class G airspace, you need to be 1,000 feet below the cloud, 1,000 feet above the cloud, and one statute mile horizontally from the cloud to remain legal. 